Hello, this is 792 Ashman here. Welcome to the first video in my tutorial series on explaining Toon Boom Studio 4. Now, let me go ahead and say something to you before I get started. A lot of people really love animations and want to get into animation themselves. Most people think their only option is Flash. And when they see Flash and they get Flash, they're very easily intimidated by how complex the software is and it's not very fun to get into at first. It's an uncomfortable software that when I tried getting into it, it wasn't near as wonderful and easy as learning the basics of Toon Boom Studio 4. I got this three years ago and have had a blast learning it, and it was relatively simple to figure out at first. If you want to become an animator, I'm going to use this series to explain to you just how quickly and easily you can become a decent animator, and I'll show you all the tips and tricks you need to use Toon Boom Studio 4 quickly and effectively. Now, with all softwares, it will take practice, and if you're not that good at art, it will take some time to get good. But right now, I'm going to give you the tools to be able to create something well done. I have various other animations on my YouTube channel. All of them are made with Toon Boom Studio 4. I'm going to be switching to Flash sometime in the future for various reasons I'll talk about later. As I noticed, there really aren't very many tutorials for the software out on YouTube. No. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I'm going to try my best to answer any comments given to me. Uh, unlike some other videos where you kind of want to keep a closed mouth and just let people watch the animation, this time I'm going to try and give good feedback. Also, when you're creating a comment, please look back a little bit to make sure that the question you're asking hasn't already been answered relatively quickly. Also, check the in as I might make an FAQ for each video. Alright, so... This is Toon Boom Studio 4's opening screen for whenever you just opened up the software. It's got your recent documents that you've been working with, and, you know, what else not? We're going to explain all this. Let me first explain what I use for my software. I use Toon Boom Studio 4, which is created by Toon Boom, a corporation that has created many animating softwares, including storyboard softwares and, you know, children and professional softwares. I seriously suggest that you have a look at the showcase for Toon Boom on their website. They have very many legitimate animators, including Cartoon Network and um, Disney. A lot of the advanced softwares are actually used in Disney movies like Princess and the Frog. And, you know, this is some legit software. It ain't the most expensive product when you look just at Toon Boom Studio, which comes out at about um, $200, I think, right now. This is Toon Boom Studio 4, which is an older version of the product. The newer versions of the product should have everything that's here. Um, but the layout may look different. I personally do not suggest you get the newest version and stick to Toon Boom Studio 4 as it will give you just what you need without a lot of the gimmicks that they're bringing up in the newer versions. So, I also use a Wacom Bamboo Pen. Yeah, a Wacom Bamboo Pen. This is a tablet, which is, if you don't know, a little square thing that sits on my desk that comes with a pen, and you can pretty much move your hand around with the pen and you know it, it does whatever you want. It's a really good tablet and if you want to invest in a tablet I seriously just don't. Now if you're one of those people listening right now and you're like oh man all those animations you made them with tablets. I don't want to buy a tablet. That's more money than I have. I mean I just have a mouse. That's not true. Hold up. Half of my animations have been made with a mouse because the, tab the tablet is relatively new to me and I even made a video that explained that I just got the tablet and I made a kind of a uh, rough sketch animation, I think about Sonic and a spider. <laughs> a spider. Um, so don't feel intimidated if you don't have a tablet. Although, if you do want to invest in a tablet, it is a wonderful thing to have with you. So let's jump into the software. This is the opening screen when you open it up and you have the name of the animation. We're going to name it um, Basics. All right, you have the format. Uh, go ahead and stick to what they got here. It's got the HD versions I use. Uh, I've actually been using a really low quality camera size when working with these. And only until very recently did I figure out I can go HD big time. So I suggest you go ahead and set the camera size to be nice and good and uh, the format into HD, okay? The frame rate you don't need to worry about because you can change that later. 12 frame rate ain't really the best. I use 23 or 24, um, but you really want to have a frame rate that fits the best, you know, version of your animation. So, let's create this right here by clicking Create. 
Alright, so here is the layout for Toon Boom Studio 4. You have all of this positioned as it comes right now, but the great thing about Toon Boom is that it focuses solely on being comfortable for new time users and animation. You can move things around wherever you want, stretch them to whatever size you'd like, drag things and have them float, you can uh, create new bars as you can see right here, you know, if I want to have my color palette up there and, you know, keep my library away or get rid of it or put it someplace else, it's totally available for me to do that. Um, you know, you, as you notice, the, tab, the timeline is down at the bottom, you can actually put that up at the top if you'd like. So, keep in mind that everything is nice and versatile for you, so if you'd like to do something else with your animations, um, and, and your workflow and your workspace, it's all very comfortable, and the docking systems for this is very responsive and good. So, let's go ahead and explain to you today drawing. Um, I'm going to try and be brief with these little segments, as I don't have all the time in the world to go over to Loom in a one, you know, hour long thing. We're just going to go through through things by steps, okay? And quick, short steps. A lot of people I've seen when they do tutorials, they'll give you all of the buttons at first. I'm not going to tell you what each of these buttons mean at first, as you will completely, you know, you're not going to remember some of these things. I'm just going to show you what you need to know right now, okay? And processes that you may have questions on, we'll go into later in another video, okay? So, let's first explain the drawing buttons. So, here you have your selecting buttons, your drawing buttons, your coloring buttons, uh, your erasing and cutting buttons, your zooming buttons, and your text buttons. Now, Flash, which I've been using very... I'm, I'm relatively new to it, so I don't know everything about it, but from what I can see, it's a lot like an upgraded version of Microsoft Paint. It's not that good, um, and Toon Boom offers new buttons that they find inventive and innovative, and I am 100% behind that. These are good, good tools that you'll need to be able to make an animation or a drawing. So, let's go ahead and draw using the brush tool. This is my go-to button. I used to use the pencil tool, and I'll explain the differences between those in a minute. So, first, let's draw a line with the brush tool. Woo! Line. You got a line. If you zoom in, which is Z and X, you know, you just press X, you zoom in, you press Z, you zoom out. In, out, in, well, out, in. <laughs> Alright, so here's a line. You can have the line at whatever width or um, thinness you like. Flash has only like five or six different sizes of, you know, circles or whatever shape you're going to use whenever you're doing your brush. Toon Boom gives you 999 different sizes. So that would be <laughs> Toon Boom 1 Flash 0. You can make it whatever maximum size you'd like and whatever minimum size you'd like. So as you can see, when you're using a tablet, you know, you can make a fat line and it can be small and and it can be fat, 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 okay? So, that's pretty awesome. You can, uh, depending on the pressure sensitivity, you can make it at whatever width you like, and this can create a really quick, simple, easy way to draw. Now, if you have a, uh, if you have a mouse, I'll just go ahead and explain right now, it also will, you know, it, it'll keep it about the same size, but as you can see, it's smart enough to kind of see where places should be thinner and which places should be thicker. Okay? So, then we're going to explain smoothness. Now, a lot of animators use the smoothness bar because it's a very good way to make, you know, um, a quick drawing look good. So, if you have smoothness down to zero, and I draw a line like this, all of the little pulsations with my hand, uh, you know, all the times my hand shakes are going to come out exactly as I just drew them. Okay? Now, if I have the smoothness up to a higher level, <laughs> it's going to, you know, in like places where my hands shake, it's going to smooth them out, which is really useful. Um, people will also like to use this whenever they're using uh, shaking characters and lines or whatever. So, if you have the smoothness too high, I'm just going to go ahead and explain this. Be sure that whenever you have the smoothness of 10 or 9, you're drawing big objects and not small. I'll explain this. I'm going to draw um, a crummy-looking car with zero smoothness. Okay, that's the dumbest car I've ever drawn, but yeah. So that's it, it's zero smooth. Now I'm gonna draw a car at 10 smoothness. Okay. 
Sorry, that was a pretty crummy looking wheel. <laughs> okay, that's not anything like I was trying to draw. See how it smoothed out that part right there? Not good. So, if you're working with a big smoothness, be sure you're working with big lines, and you know, it can look wonderful. I, I seriously suggest you use smoothness. It's a, it's a good option. Okay. So that's brush. Let's explain now pencil. Okay, so there's my brush line. I'm also going to draw a pencil line beside it, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. So pencil, what it is, is I cannot change the width or uh, size of it with my tablet. You know, it's the exact same width every time, okay? And you can adjust the size of it down here. Now, there are some cons and pros to this, and, you know, if you like to use a style that does not have uh, widths to it, like anime, for example, does not do that. It keeps things in a very stiff kind of way, at a very, you know, small, um, a very small size. So that's a good option for you if you want to be doing things like that. Or the pencil tool can be something that you can, uh, you know, draw on top of if you want to, you know, kind of ink it out. So, that would be your pencil tool. And the rest is pretty simple. You got a circle, you've got your square, you know, you can make it whatever you want, like the width or length or whatever. Um, got your polyline. This is something that I really don't use, but, you know, some people do. Some people use this. Um, if you are a fan of the Sonic Shorts, the Wax 70 uses the polyline tool for all of his animations. Fun fact. Okay, so you can make a weird lines like that. I have no idea how to stop it. It's a monster. <laughs> Go ahead and get rid of it. So that's the polyline tool. And then there's the line tool. So you can draw a line, you know, for beginning animators, this is usually a very important, you know, tool to use. So this would be your drawing arsenal. It's a good arsenal, and I'm going to explain how to make each of them better. So that's going to be your drawing buttons. Now I'm going to go over the selecting buttons. With the selection button, you can pretty much select whatever you have selected. Now pay attention, this is cool. With Flash, if I were to let go right now, everything that's in the shaded region of this square, or rectangle, would be selected. But, when I let go in Toon Boom, the whole line is selected. We're working with vectors, so get your mind around that. So, now I can move this around however I'd like, um, make it, you know, longer. If you hold down Shift, you can make it consistently the same size, bigger with the same proportions, um, longer squasher. You can rotate it. Rotate it, yeah. Rotate that. <laughs> um, so that would be your selection button, okay? If you want to, you can hold down Alt, so you don't have to use the standard, you know, square. You can lasso. And watch again, as I lasso this thing, and, you know, just lasso this segment, it selects the whole line. Very important. I like it a lot more than, you know, having to constantly go through the selection process in Flash. Now I'm going to explain to you a very important button. Say hello to the contour button. Alright? This is Mr. Contour. He also has a selection deal that you can make a lasso or a square. Now, I'm going to select this. I'm going to zoom in real quick and show you what we got going here. With the brush tool, you have the outline of the, of the line able to be, you know, lengthened or, you know, compressed. You can make it fat or thin, whatever you'd like. You can also double-click it and, you know, use these interesting little, uh, you know, what would you call these? Handlebars on the sides of the square that you can, you know, make it whatever kind of interesting shape you'd like. And, you know, it, it's a very interesting tool. I, I seriously suggest you test it out and try and use it because it comes in handy. So that would be your, you know, contour button. Now we're going to talk about what happens if I click a pencil line instead of a brush line. Now look at this. The red is not on the outside, but it's on the inside. So, if I were to grab this little um, blue square, instead of, you know, being able to lengthen the width of it, it actually moves the whole line. Okay, now this is a lot easier to work around, because if, say, I wanted to take a straight line like this and make it a bow, and I wanted to do that with a brush, I'd have to drag both sides of it, you know, maybe create some extra squares, which you can do by holding down Alt and clicking on any point in the red line, and, you know, doing this. 
it's a lot, you know, more tedious, and if you're one of those people who like quick and easy ways to change lines, this is your, the pencil tool is your friend. So now you kind of know the pros and cons of the pencil and the brush tool. All right, now, these three shapes follow the exact same suit as the pencil tool. It does not work with the outlines, but say, hey, I want to be able to create a square or a circle or a line that follows the same, um, the same interface as a brush tool, as, as a brush line. Now I'm going to go over to select, and I'm going to select these shapes, or, you know, well, select them all, I guess, and you're going to right click and go to convert lines to brush. I'm going to quickly go over all of these right in here because this little drop down menu it's all you're gonna need this is about as complex as Toon Boom gets in terms of like right clicking and going through you know lines and stuff like that so I'm gonna quickly go over these your cut tool cuts copy tool copies paste tool pastes pretty easy select tool selects everything on your little um, on your frame deselect all pretty easy just deselect arrange brings the things you have selected to the front or to the back. Bringing forward or sending backwards one time really doesn't get you nowhere. Just stick to using front or send to back. Alright, transform. Flip horizontal ways. You know, I can flip it back to horizontal again, or I can flip it vertical. You can also get real precise and flip it, you know, 90 degrees counterclockwise, uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, rotate it 180, pretty easy, okay? Then you can group them. This is important. If you don't want to constantly have to select all of these guys, you can just click. If you group them, they're all together. Pretty nice, okay? And you can ungroup them. Also pretty easy. Flatten and optimize. I don't really use them. Smooth. Important if you like to use shaking. If I want to draw this line and then in another frame use the same line but have it shake, I just right click and click smooth and you can see it smoothed a little bit and it's changed. A lot of people like using smooth when they're going over the drawing they just made and want to make it look better. It's a really useful tool. In fact, I want you to really, really, really remember smooth. Smooth is an important button. Right click, smooth for any line. All right, so then you have extract center line. But, okay, wait, sorry, excuse me. Now you have convert line to brush. So I want to convert these to, to brush like I said, and now if you go over to your contour tool, you can drag, you can make it as wide and thick as you want, like I was explaining earlier. Alright, that's what you need to know. Now, say I want to bring it back to, you know, bring it back to a line, uh, following the suit of the pencil tool. You know, you could just click undo, but, you know, you could, if you'd like, select it and go extract center line. And it's taken it back. It's taken it back to a pencil tool, but you know it kind of doesn't look the same. So that's pretty much drawing. Next episode, we're going to go over uh, painting, uh, erasing, cutting, zooming, text. You know, pretty much all the rest of the different features. And then we're going to get into some other stuff. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, subscribe, like. If you subscribe, um, doing one of these every week. So you can keep yourself informed for when the next episode comes out. Thank you so much for watching. Ashman792.